So this is a case study about Vanessa, one of my one-to-one -one clients, and how she hit her weight loss goals. Now, I'm sure you're very um, attracted to the images on this slide here. And there's some pictures of Vanessa before she had surgery. And I know the pictures of Vanessa after surgery are going to be very intriguing for you. So how did Vanessa hit her goal? So let's go into the weight data first. So Vanessa had a gastric sleeve on the 13th of September, 2022. Her start weight was 116 kilos with a BMI of 42.6. I calculated her ideal weight, which is BMI 25 at 68 kilos and a realistic weight, which is BMI 28 at 76 kilos, because this is more of a realistic weight that you're likely to achieve post-surgery than the ideal weight. But let's go on to see what Vanessa um, struggled with before she had surgery and how she hit her goals. So I'm always very interested in your habits and behaviors from early childhood because they're the habits and behaviors that you grow up with and likely to still have after weight loss surgery. So Vanessa, life and food was very controlled. Mum um, was very controlling in the sense that Vanessa wasn't allowed to have friends over. She wasn't allowed to hang out with her friends. She wasn't allowed to have sleepovers. She wasn't allowed to have parties at home nor go to parties. So life was quite controlled by mum because she was a single parent. And that was her way of showing protection, her way of protecting Vanessa. So it wasn't done in a bad, abusive way. It was done to protect Vanessa. But also with that came food. Food was very controlled. Um, and because mum struggled with her weight, she ensured that Vanessa and her other brothers and sisters um, ate very healthy food. So they weren't allowed to um, have chocolates, cakes and sweets at home, but also finances were very limited. And this resulted in the fact that they couldn't eat, have takeaways. They had very few sweets and chocolates and cake and they weren't allowed to eat out. Now, because Vanessa was very friendly at college, she was aware that most of her friends would be allowed to eat out. They spoke about eating out and having sweets and cakes and so forth. So she always felt that she was very different from other children. And this may be something that you relate to too. So in her late teens, Vanessa left college and after living at home in an environment that was very controlled by mom, and this wasn't in an abusive way, as I said before, it was more to protect Vanessa from going down the wrong path. Vanessa, for the first time, was alone and had freedom and no one to control food choices, um, relationships and her life. And you may have heard me say this before, but because she had no control from mom, she was like a cage lion let out. She had the freedom to go out, eat what she wanted. She, she could drink alcohol. She was having relationships and fun. And this lack of control led to Vanessa gaining weight. And she spent most of her 20s trying to lose the weight with fad diets and exercise. And she absolutely hated the gym. She had a poor relationship with food. She was binging on foods that were controlled in her childhood, which led to this all or nothing mindset when it came to dieting. But the great thing was that Vanessa was great at dieting because she lost a lot of weight on a very strict diet before her wedding, but she just could not keep the weight off. Vanessa also was a bit of a people pleaser and that's because she had a very strict childhood and she respected her peers and her adults and as a result she used food to numb her emotions or mute herself from saying what she what she actually felt so food was used in many ways and we worked on this when we worked one to one. So this slide shows you a lot of the things that um, Vanessa was experiencing pre-surgery. So Vanessa was fed up with yo-yo dieting. She'd been researching the gastric sleeve in Facebook groups and she'd made a decision to have a gastric sleeve as nothing had worked to help her lose weight and keep it off. off. So she was also experiencing um, low, low emotions. She was losing her confidence. She wasn't wanting to go out with family. She was hiding. She was eating in secret at home and she was binging. Um, she felt out of control around food. She was eating fast food um, and ready meals and she lost interest in cooking. She was binging at home in secret. She was tired and exhausted all the time. She developed sleep apnea. Um, her, she had hypothyroidism. She had a fatty liver and she was at risk of 
diabetes and high blood pressure. So there were a lot of things going on. So the things that are highlighted in this light blue color are the things that weight loss will change through having weight loss surgery. However, the light beige colors about emotions and relationship with food are the things that she would need to work on with myself on her relationship with food, because that's what's going to keep the weight off forever. So 12 months post off, what did we do? So I had asked Vanessa because she was training a fair bit and I'll go into that. At, um, and this was well before 12 months, but this is what I want to give you a summary of what she was doing. Um, she was eating three small meals a day and her meals were balanced as half protein, a quarter veg and a quarter carbs. But that's because she was training most days. And I also encouraged her to eat two to three protein snacks per day. So her main protein goal was 80, 80 grams per day. But on the days that she exercised, which was five days a week, she had to have an additional 20, 25 grams of protein after training. So I helped her um, relearn her habits about food and see food as fuel, especially um, on the days that she exercised rather than food as restriction. Because although you have a smaller stomach and the food portions are restricted, she also needed to understand she needed to fuel her body, especially pre-exercise. And hence, that's why her balance of her meals were half protein, a quarter veg and a quarter carbs, because she needed the carbs, she needed the energy. Her exercise habits were she was doing three sessions of weights per week to build muscle. And we know muscle improves metabolic health and improves your metabolism. And again, that would also improve thyroid function. She was doing a lot more cardio when I first met her, but I asked her to calm it down to one cardio session per week, because if we over-exercise, we cause um, physical stress on the body and that will actually hold on to our weight rather than help you lose it so we reduced her cardio sessions to one per week and we also built in um, a stretching exercise and something that's going to be good for her soul and her mental health so we introduced yoga or pilates once a week so that was three weight sessions one cardio and one yoga stroke pilates session now i the cardio session um, Vanessa enjoyed because it was time out from doing weights. It was just time out from the home. However, you may just feel that you just need to do a couple of weight sessions a week and one cardio or one stretching. But this is what we did with, with um, Vanessa. She also continued with eight to 10,000 steps per day. And I asked her to ideally walk outside when the weather was good to improve her mental health, to get in touch with nature because our mental health is so important in our mood because if that is affected one of the things that we we do is we we turn to food for comfort to help relieve our stress and I know that we focused on Vanessa's relationship with food when we worked together um, we started this off by restructuring her environment because she had a lot of foods in that were very tempting for her that um, made her turn to snacking, you know, on the kids' snacks, chocolate biscuits, crisps, ice cream, they were all in the home. So I asked her to restructure her environment and remove as much as she could and whatever she had for the children to move to the garage. So it made it difficult. So it was out of her mindset and eyesight when she was in her home because she worked from home for her husband. So we restructured the environment. We did look at her triggers to eating and um, by doing the food and mood diary and stress um boredom loneliness were some of the, the the top triggers for eating and we managed that so and we did that by regulating her eating and also she had a lot of cravings but that was more down to the fact that she was over exercising so once she started to get her exercise under control and fuel her body right the cravings seemed to to lessen we also built in the 80 20 rule to allow her to have permission to enjoy the foods that she loved. And Vanessa likes a cocktail. She likes the odd slice of cake. And we agreed that she would eat these foods or drink alcohol outside of the home. And she now does that and she really does enjoy going out. And obviously she has the confidence for that. Now, cravings and urges to eat food that we consider unhealthy or bad is fairly normal. And what we need to do when we have those um, urges and cravings is to make space. So I've asked Vanessa, whenever she does have these urges, 
um, for cravings or to eat a specific food is just to stop, pause and think. And she now does this. And I've asked her to get curious about the craving. So when she is craving, it could, she's realized actually most of her cravings are mid-cycle. So I've said, right, well, you know, when you're mid-cycle, you've just got to build it in that you're going to have um, some chocolate. Maybe after your training, you have a, a protein chocolate bar. But getting curious and being more mindful about your emotions, your triggers to eating is where the real work is. And you must be patient with yourself. And let me tell you, being mindful and curious is a work that you will do for the rest of your life when it comes to emotional eating, but it will get better and better. And look, you're always going to have an off day and go back to your old habits. And Vanessa is fully aware of that. And she accepts that. She accepts that she doesn't have to be perfect 100% of the time. For her, perfection now is 80% and 20%. She, she, she gives herself the space to put take her foot off the pedal with being so strict. And remember, she's had this instilled it since childhood about being perfect because that's what her, her mother had taught her. So she's now working on these things. She's getting more organized with her food. She's having more fun with her children. And as she realizes that her energy has changed, she is continuing to put these things into practice. And she's been very kind when she goes off the rails so, you know, these things aren't set in stone. Our old habits will always emerge. It's how we handle them. So this is Vanessa now. And as you can see, she is very strong. She is lean. So her journey has been more about fat loss rather than weight loss. So when she started out, she was 116 kilos. She's now 63 kilos. She's lost 53 kilos in weight. And that's about 110% of her excess weight loss. She continues to fuel her body. She creates balance in both her food and exercise. And, you know, exercise is, is a huge part of her life. It is her lifestyle change. She's more balanced in eating and no longer binges or eats in secret. She's more confident and especially around food. It doesn't phase her anymore. She's more aware and curious about her tricks to eating. And she will always be like that now as I am too with my relationship with food. And she's living her best life and has a better mindset with creating balance in her life. Every day is, an, is a work in progress and this will be the same for you. I hope you enjoyed this case study, but it's, it's there to show you that we have to create our story. We have to create the lifestyle that works for us. Now, for everybody else, getting up five days a week, may not be possible to exercise, but for Vanessa, she gets up early like myself. She gets in with the exercise before the kids wake up and that's how she's, she's built it in. For you, it might be that you go for a walk and you go for a walk with a, um, a group of women that are into walking. So sometimes, you know, your, your, your circle of friendships may change like they have done for Vanessa. So please be patient, trust the process, and work on your relationship with food, your habits and your lifestyle. And I guarantee you, you will be a success just like Vanessa.